and him <laughs> we went for a walk yesterday and he found a stick that he was super super proud of it was funny because we walked for probably an hour and he carried the stick the whole time which i thought was super funny um if you hear some scratching i think is what it is it's definitely him i don't know if you can hear it he is trying to break out of his kennel <laughs> <laughs> which is like a daily occurrence for him bless his heart <laughs> um he has way too much energy <laughs> i wish i had just half of the energy that he has because oh my goodness i need coffee even in the middle of the day all right so we um let's see um if you haven't joined um the portal yet you can there's a lot of information there there's some more pdfs there um, is a list of videos for every single day so you can find all of them in one place um, and it's totally free so no reason not to join right you can go to infjwoman.com challenge um and we're gonna be here every single day this week at 12 p.m eastern time um and today we are going to talk about eight ways to monetize your blog I'm going to share with you eight different ways that I have used and then a couple of other ways that I've also used too that um, have just been things that came up. They weren't, um, it wasn't anything that that I planned to do when I started out. I really didn't even think about monetizing my blog when I first started. I really just wanted to write. Um, but then pretty quickly, once once I had an audience, I was like, oh, wait a minute, I could make money off of this. Um, how cool would that be? I would love to have an extra income. Um, <laughs> so when, when I think about monetizing my blog, I always think about Jerry Maguire. <laughs> so I had to throw that meme in here. If you haven't seen Jerry Maguire, you have to go watch it. It's a really great movie. Um, all right. So the first way that most people think about monetizing their blog is through ads. And this is um, an article that I pulled off of Yahoo. Um, and I really wasn't even looking at the article. I was just linking, thinking or just looking at this ad here. This was a video actually for Cadillac. And then there's a couple of ads here for Workday, as you can see. And as you scroll down, there's more ads down there. You'll notice these on pretty much every news website that you read. Um, you will probably see them on most of the blogs that you like to read. Very few people don't have ads. Um, I had ads on my blog for a while. As a graphic designer, I hate the look of them. They just, it bothered me so much. And one of the drawbacks to ads, well, obviously the look, <laughs> but another drawback is that you have to have a lot of traffic in order to make any type of money off of them. Um, so while they are an easy way to make money because all you need to do is drive traffic to your, your blog or your website, um, it can be difficult to make enough money. Uh, but it really just depends on how much money that you want. Um, I really never made that much money. I think I made like 20 or $30 a month. It really wasn't very much. So the next way is through something called an affiliate link. Um, and this is also another very, very popular way. So, and basically what an affiliate link is, is you get commission when someone buys something from someone else, but you share the link with people, right? So this is one of my blog posts that is about books that I think INFJ should read. Um, I love Evan Carmichael. I like Lauren Sapala. I love Susan Cain. Um, there's a bunch of books on this blog post. And what it is, is Amazon has an affiliate program that you can sign up for that's free. And there's no minimum that you have to sell every single month. Um, if it's just that if you, if you link to something and somebody buys it, then you get a commission off of it. It's not very much. It's probably like between like one and 4%, I think. Um, but if somebody um, clicks on your link and then they go buy a bunch of other stuff from Amazon from that same link, then you get commission off of everything that they buy. So again, it can be pretty lucrative. Um, 
And all you have to do is link to things on your website. There's a lot of people who do this. Um, I know I was talking, oh, I think it was actually in a video that I put out over the weekend on YouTube, um, one of the new videos that I did. I was talking about some of the videos that my niece and I like to watch on YouTube. And one of them is from this guy called The Deal Guy, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, and he just goes to like different stores like Costco and Sam's and Walmart and Target and talks about everything that they have on sale um, and everything you should be buying from them like that month. Um, and then he also does videos for like Prime Day and Black Friday and all of those things. And some of his videos have affiliate links on them. So, you know, he makes money from YouTube by making the videos and people watching them. But then he also makes money by people clicking on the links um, to buy some of the stuff that he talks about. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, and it works really well for people. Like if you want to have a blog that talks about lifestyle or about um, like organization or interior design, um, those types of things, anything that's talking about things that people will buy, that would work re really well, especially if they're very expensive things. The more expensive, um, the more money you make, right? So the next thing is that you could do is to sell a good. Um, this is a picture from one of my favorite podcasts. Um, it is... The podcast is called My So-Called Whatever, and for some reason, there's two pictures. <laughs> my, my computer updated last night because, of course, it did, and it would not turn off, and I was, like, in bed trying to go to sleep, and it, it was lighting up my whole room, so I just unplugged it because that was faster from where I was, and it was, like, 11 or 12 o'clock at night, so then when I got up this morning and was trying to figure out my slideshow all my pictures were gone so I added new pictures and now apparently there's two pictures anyway that's <laughs> that's how it goes right um so selling a good um is something that you could do um this is I forget what the term for it is but basically there are these websites um that will make products for you um, as people buy them, right? So you don't have to have an inventory of things. All you have to do is design things. And so these, t like this, um, these t-shirts are like $24. So they might make five or $10 off of the t-shirt. Um, and what happens is, um, so you design these, you put them up on a website. When somebody clicks on it and buys it, this third party company is printing the t-shirt and shipping it to the person who ordered it. So you don't have to do anything except for design them and then collect the money. So you make less of a profit by doing it that way, but it's also super easy. There's hardly anything that you have to do. Um, so that's something to look at, especially in the beginning, because you don't want to buy a bunch of stuff that that nobody's going to buy from you, right? So this way you can figure out what people like and, and what people don't like. Um, there's so much on Etsy um, and Amazon too. You can sell on Amazon um, if there's something that you like. One of my, <clears throat> excuse me, one of my friends has a Cricut um, printing machine. <clears throat> Losing my voice right as we get started. <laughs> That's probably not a good sign. Um, but she has one of those Cricut printing machines and she's talked me into buying one because you can make stuff like this um, to get started. And you can sell it for a little bit more because it doesn't have to be printed on cheap t-shirts. You can use the, you know, the t-shirts that you like. So the next thing is provide a service. And this can really be any service. Um, I interviewed somebody on my podcast who organized people's houses. Um, I've done graphic design work. One of my friends is a virtual assistant. And as a virtual assistant, she makes $300,000 a year. So <laughs> it's a very, very, very lucrative business. 
Um, and it can be any service that, um, any service that you can think of, anything that you have an expertise in or that you really want to do. Coaching is another big thing. And there's a lot of different types of coaching. You don't just have to be a life coach. You could be a business coach, a wellness coach, a health coach, um, money, organization, anything really. I myself have hired a life coach, a business coach, and a health coach at different points in my life. Um, so I, and I know that there's a lot of people out there who, who hire these people, not just coaches, not just people who want to be coaches, but people who hire coaches as well. Um, something that kind of surprised me that I've seen growing a lot more is selling things like worksheets. Um, I just pulled this picture off of Etsy really quick. I know it looks like very loud and um, overwhelming (laughs) is kind of how I felt when I saw it. But there are so many people who sell worksheets or workbooks. And you can see some of them don't, they're not, they don't really cost a lot. All you really have to do is design the worksheet and then offer it for sale as like a digital file. So again, kind of like with the the t-shirts that are drop shipped to people, um, there isn't really too much work that goes into it. Once you design it, you can sell it forever. So if you like graphic design um, or if you like playing around with it, because there are free places where you can do it too. You can, you don't have to hire somebody. You can use Canva um, or you can use Adobe. I want to call it Spark. It's Express now, I think, which is also free. Um, And you can design worksheets for really anything. It doesn't have to be organization. I have a free one that I give people that's about purpose, about finding your purpose. Um, And I have several more about other things, finding the right career for you. Um, How to know if you're an INFJ, all those kinds of things. And you can make a lot of money off of just a dollar or three dollars each. Um, the next thing is like books or ebooks, and it could be a regular book or it could be just like an ebook. So, like this ebook that I have is seven dollars. Um, and it's I don't remember, I think this one might be a hundred to like 150 pages. Um, uh, it's not terribly long, but it's a really nice book and it helps solve a problem very quickly. And again, it's only $7, but there's, there's a few advantages to selling something that's $7 or less. Um, it doesn't take you that much time to put together. You don't have to, um, fuss really too much over the design of the whole thing. You're not printing anything, um, so you don't have to worry about keeping stock of it um, or all the cost of printing things. You can help somebody solve a problem very quickly. And these types of problems, people don't want to read something that's 300 pages. They want, you know, a three-step guide or a five-step guide, something that will give them a really quick win. Um, And the other thing is there isn't a lot of resistance that people put up in themselves to purchasing something that's seven dollars and i don't know about you but for me when i see something that's halfway interesting and i'm like oh it's three dollars or oh it's seven dollars okay i have seven dollars i can buy that i'll buy it just out of curiosity because it's really not that much money when it gets to be like thirty dollars or fifty dollars then it's like okay if that's really interesting i might give you fifty dollars for it if it's a hundred dollars, then it's like, mm, this has to be somebody that I really know, like, and trust in order for me to give you a hundred dollars. And if it's anything above that, then it's like, mm, I don't know. It's got to be really good. So seven dollars is really a good type of entry point because, you know, a lot of people will purchase it just out of curiosity. And then the last thing that people talk about a lot nowadays that I have found makes quite a bit of money or can make quite a bit of money um, is teaching is courses. It's teaching people how to do something that they already know and like to do. Right. 
So these are some of my courses. Um, you can see Blog School is on there, which we're going to talk more about. Um, underneath that, Blog Basics is a shorter course that's less than $50. Um, there's Write for Your Life, which is the free challenge that we're doing now. I have other challenges that are like 21-day challenges. So the Purpose Challenge is a 21-day challenge, um, and it's $37. And then the book that I was talking about is on there too. That's $7. Um, it's on there because there are some bonuses that go with it. And the platform that I have for courses or the platform that I use, it's called Thinkific. Um, it's really, really good for holding different types of content and delivering them the way that you want it delivered. Okay, so those are the most the most common ways that people make money from blogging, from having your own website. Um, of course, there are a lot of other ways too, uh, a lot of more specialized type of ways. There are also a lot of new ways that people are making money too. So I wanted to talk about a few of those here. Social media is a really good way to make money, especially if you like social media. If you can grow any type of a following at all, and I'm talking about, you know, I've seen people sell sponsored posts that have like 500 followers. It really doesn't matter the number of followers that you have, but what matters is, is how engaged they are. Like we talked about on what day one or two, um, it really matters how engaged they are, how much they... Um, how much they interact with your content um, and how much you interact with them as well. That will help them be more engaged. So not only are we talking about like sponsored posts, which honestly, I haven't really done a lot of sponsored posts. And the big reason for me is I don't like sales. So, <laughs> so I don't like asking people for money is really what it feels like to me. Um, I probably could do more because I think I have about 75,000 followers now on Instagram. And not even that, I have like 16,000 on Facebook too. Um, and I think it drops off pretty, I think there's like 14,000 on Pinterest or something. Um, so I probably could do sponsored posts, honestly. And I just haven't done it because it's not high at the, on top of my list. Um, but there are other ways that you can make money from Instagram. So Instagram has bonuses for creators. I've made probably more than $1,000 from Instagram over the last year when I really haven't been trying. Um, they have they gave me a bonus for, I forget, doing like seven live videos in 10 days or something. Um, and this was early last year. Um, and then they gave me, there were reels bonuses. So you get a bonus for making reels every 30 days. So, and um, honestly, my reels don't really do as well as like people who have a lot more or people who make like have a lot more followers or people who make reels more. Um, I'm not really very good at making reels. It's, it just seems like a lot of work and effort to me. <laughs> You've probably noticed if you follow me on Instagram. Um, but even without really trying, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I made over $1,000 just from their bonuses. Um, it's probably actually more than that because I think that there were like four $250 bonuses that I got just for making certain kinds of content. So... Um, Instagram and Facebook also have subscriptions. Um, I have a subscription on Instagram. So if you go to, I should have put a picture of it on here, but if you go to, um, my Instagram page was it, which is INFJ woman, um, you can click on a button that says subscription and it's $4.99 a month. And it gives you access to exclusive content. So exclusive videos, posts, stories, live videos, chats, all that kind of stuff. Um, Facebook has subscriptions as well. Um, Twitter was talking about, I know Twitter's kind of a mess right now with, with their new owner and all of that jazz, but they're talking about adding a lot more options for creators. Um, so longer posts, 
possibly subscriptions um, to offer your fan or your followers. Um, and then maybe even some other things. So they're talking about like adding some kind of service like Apple Pay or something, which I don't know. It's oh, it seems like a lot is changing very quickly with Twitter. Um, but the point of what I'm trying to say is that a lot of social media platforms have ways where you can monetize your audience. Um, and really all you have to do is show up for them a little bit more. Um, and I'm sure that there are options like on TikTok and LinkedIn and um, other platforms. I focus on Instagram and Facebook the most because that's what I like to use personally. Instagram is by far my favorite. Facebook feels like it feels like going home <laughs> for me because um, I've been on Facebook since 2008 and it just feels like the home for everything, right? And then Twitter is kind of like the redheaded stepchild. It's, it's like, I don't really know what's going on here, but I'm going to show up and, and see what happens. Um, okay, so the next way that you can make money is through YouTube. Um, and basically all you're doing is making videos and making money from them, right? YouTube uses Google AdSense. So it's, it's the same format as putting ads on your website. Cause generally the ads that you put on your website, it's usually Google ads, which is called Google AdSense. Um, you do have to get a lot of views to, to make money. Um, and you do have to, to hit a certain threshold. I think you have to have a thousand followers and like 4,000 hours um, viewed. I have one um, YouTube account that is monetized. Um, and <laughs> here's the funny thing. So I have a YouTube account for my blog, which is called INFJ Woman. I have one for my podcast, which is the Quiet Ones podcast. And then I have a third one for it's kind of like I guess you would say a fan account for my favorite band um I go to a lot of concerts and so I have a lot of videos of them so I just thought one day you know what I bet other people would like to watch this video I'll put it on YouTube and I did and tons of people watched it and then um there were some other videos of one of the band members used to do a lot of Facebook lives and then he did a lot of Instagram lives. And then during the pandemic, he shut down all of his social media. And so all of those live videos went away and it sounds kind of silly, I guess, but my niece and I love to watch those videos. He's really funny. And so this video that we watched like a thousand times was now gone. And I was like devastated because <laughs> I was like, I wanted to watch that video. And then I found out that my friend had downloaded the video and she sent it to me. And so then I put it on YouTube so that other people could watch it. And so many people watched it that I was like, oh, hold on. Maybe this is like a thing. And then so I made this this um other blog that was about this group that I like and I linked a bunch of other people's YouTube videos to it and this all happened like during the pandemic like early 2020 because I had all this extra time on my hand it couldn't go anywhere right so as I was working on it over the weeks I noticed that some of the videos would disappear like people would take them off of YouTube or make them private and that really bugged me because I was like I really wanted that video like that was a really good video so then I thought well okay I'll just download some of these videos and and upload them myself or make sure that I have them right and the great thing about YouTube now some people some people are like, oh, you shouldn't download other people's videos and upload them, right? But the great thing about YouTube, especially if you're in the United States, I can only speak to the United States. I know it's different in other countries. But there is a law that talks about fair use, right? So you can actually use other people's videos if you're doing it in a certain way. I forget what it is, like a 
for editorial reasons or for something. There's some kind of special wording, which I forget what it is. But basically what I do is I always um, put like a watermark on the video that gives people credit, like the original poster credit. So like the videos that my friend gave me um, that were downloaded from YouTube, they belong to one of the band members, right? Because they were on his Facebook account, but his Facebook account is deactivated now. So it really doesn't exist anymore. So what I did is I just put a watermark on the bottom that said where they came from, right? They came from his Facebook account. And like I said, there's thousands of views on it. It's I've made like $150 from it already. Um, And it was just monetized earlier this year. And that's with me not really doing hardly anything to it. It's I add a video every once in a while when there's a new one that I find, but um, not really a whole lot. So basically what I'm saying is you can make money off of YouTube and you don't have to actually be on video. There are a lot of channels actually that I follow where there's nobody really that's on video. Um, there's this one that I think is called Charisma University. I think it's what it's called. Um, but they talk about how to be charismatic, right? How to how to make people comfortable, how to talk to people, um, how to read people's body language, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how to make yourself like less socially awkward, basically. Um, and that guy is rarely on video. Like you rarely see him. He uses clips of other people. Um, and then one of the best examples too is like Evan Carmichael. If you haven't watched his videos, you should. What he does is he pulls together clips of people who are inspirational, like Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey. And I mean, everybody, all, all kinds of people, uh, Michael Jordan, um, like really basically everybody. So he's just on video a little bit talking about what the video is going to say. And then some of his videos are two or three hours long and they're just clips of other people talking. Um, so it, it could be something that's really interesting if you like YouTube videos. Okay. And so the third way that you can make money that I've made money is by podcasting. Now I'll be super honest. Podcasting isn't for everybody, but it's probably a better choice than being on video. Um, I struggled a lot with putting myself out there in the beginning with my blog. But once I got comfortable blogging, I would say after it was close to a year, um, I think I started blogging in December of 2018. And then I started my podcast in August of 2019. So it took me a little while to get comfortable putting myself out there. And then I discovered podcasting and I realized, you know, it was this whole new level, but I like challenges. I like to challenge myself to do things that aren't necessarily super comfortable. So it was like the next challenge for me. And you can make a lot of money podcasting. So if you listen to my podcast, which is called The Quiet Ones, (laughs) you've probably noticed that there are ads on there. Um, The ads are a lot like Google AdSense and they come from my podcast host, which is called Spreaker. Um, So basically people listen to my podcast, they hear the ads um, and they send me money and there's nothing that I have to do except for create new podcasts. That is the easy way to go. And I think, I don't know if this is still true, but when I switched my hosting to Spreaker, which was like in 2020, they were one of the few hosts that was doing ads for anybody. It didn't matter how many um, downloads that you had per week or per month. They didn't care. They would still, they would still, um, let you monetize your podcast. Some of the other platforms, um, made, made it so you had to have like a threshold that you hit. Um, but that might be different now. Cause like I said, it's been a while. Um, but another thing that you can do is you can get sponsors for your whole podcast. You can sell ads on your own. So where, you're going and asking people for money. So you'll get more money from them. Um, 
both of those things have been difficult for me because like I said, I'm, I don't like to sell things. (laughs) So those have been difficult for me, but I have used my podcast a lot to promote my own products. And, And that works, that works for me really, really well. So the real point of this story is there's a lot of things that you can sell to make money, but selling shouldn't really feel icky, right? A lot of people have this, like my niece was telling me about, she said that she got the ick from something. And I was like, what, what does that mean? And she, (laughs) she's like, well, you know, it's like when you feel icky or like when you're grossed out. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. I guess that's a new thing. I, (laughs) I don't know. Um, But selling is probably something that a lot of people would get the ick from, right? Because you think about it and you're like, oh, I don't want to like be that person who's asking people for money, right? Um, I was talking to my niece about starting a blog or um, starting even like a, a an Instagram account for her dog. And she was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to be a sellout. And I was like... Why does that make you a sellout? Seriously, why does it make you a sellout? Why why is it like this horrible, gross, terrible thing? Like, do you think about Target as being a sellout? Do you think of them as being like gross and disgusting? Or are you really thankful for a store that has toilet paper and socks? Because I don't know about you, but I'm like super thankful for a store that has toilet paper, especially after the great toilet paper scare of 2020. I don't ever want to go back to that again. Are you, I mean, do you think of, of Starbucks as like a sellout? Do you think of them as being icky for selling coffee? You might think of them as being icky for charging $7 for their coffee. And that's totally fine. Right. (laughs) But you generally don't think of them as being bad people just for selling coffee. Right. I mean, I'm thankful that they make me coffee every single morning. I don't necessarily like that it's $7, but I'm okay with paying that because I really like their coffee. Are you embarrassed when your favorite author writes a new book? Are you, do you call him a sellout or her? Do you call them a sellout? Or are you really, really excited to experience another 300 pages of his amazing writing? I don't know about you, but when my favorite author announces a new book, I'm right there. I'm there for it. I'm hitting the pre-order button all day long. Selling doesn't have to be this icky, horrible thing. It really depends on how you look at it, right? If you look at selling as sharing your gifts with the world, as helping people, then it takes on a whole new meaning, right? And you have to say like, okay, well, how is me selling something to someone helping them? How does that work? Well, it, it works in a couple of ways. You're holding them accountable, right? You're not only are you sharing your information with them, you're helping them solve a problem, but you're holding them accountable. How many of you like freebies? I like freebies. I have a whole folder for it, full of them. I have a folder that has multiple folders inside of it. <laughs> I can show you probably a thousand free files that I have downloaded from people. But here's the difference between free full, free files, free courses, and courses that you paid for. I have probably read the free ones. If I've even read them, it's very quickly. It's skimming over it. And a lot of them, I just drop them into the file without reading them because it's like, oh, that's interesting. I'll read it later. And I never read them because I never go back to them because it didn't cost me anything. It didn't hurt me at all. It didn't um, stretch me at all. There was no reason for me to go back there and look at it aside from the information. And if it's the same information that I've seen a hundred times, why it doesn't hold me accountable, right? It, It didn't hurt me at all. So if I pay, like we were talking about before, if I pay $7 for something, I might look at it just because I paid something for it. But it kind of goes in the free folder too. Now, if I pay $100 for something, it's like, ooh, 
a hundred dollars. Mm. I'm going to look at that because a hundred dollars is not something that I have a lot of. I don't have that kind of money just sitting around where it means something to me. I have to sacrifice something to pay a hundred dollars for something. I may not be able to go to Starbucks every day this week. <laughs> um, I might not be able to go out to dinner this week. I have to trade something in order for that hundred dollars, right? Now, what if you paid a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars for it? I have bought courses for a thousand dollars and I've bought courses for five hundred dollars too. The thousand dollar course I showed up for every single week when there were new courses or when there were new um, modules, I was there. They were released on Sunday. I was always there every Sunday watching every single video because a thousand dollars was a lot of money for me. And I really wanted the information that was in that course. The $5,000 course I showed up for four times a week. There were two live videos a week. There was um, a, a, um, a like meeting among our peers. They called it pods. Um, and then there was another meeting that talked about technology and stuff. So for 12 weeks, I showed up four times a week. It was important to me and I wasn't going to miss it because $5,000 was a lot of money for me. It was like $350 out of my bank account every single month. And every time one of those charges hit, it was like, oh, I feel that. I have to sacrifice for that. That's more money than my car payment is. That was a big sacrifice for me. So of course I was going to show up for it. So when you charge people for things, you're holding them accountable for something, right? You're making sure that they make it a priority in their life, that it's important to them. It's not just something that they're going to drop in a file and never look at again. When I started my blog, it was a big deal for me. It didn't cost me that much money. It probably cost me with the hosting and the first website that I had, I think it cost me $300 to get it started. And that was for the whole year, but you had to pay all of that up front. Um, but that was important to me. And it was a lot of money to me at the time too, because I knew that I wanted to do it. I wanted to make a difference in the world. I hated my job at the time. And I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to wake up in the morning and need Starbucks. Um, Starbucks was the only thing that got me out of, out of bed in the morning. I hated going to work. And I knew that there was a Starbucks between me and work. And I was like, okay, well, I can get up and, and be excited about going to Starbucks. <laughs> and then I can go to work. I really, really did not like my boss. He was terrible. He treated me like I was stupid every single day. Um, and he talked down to me and then he wouldn't let me do anything. And I was so tired of not being treated right. I used to cry on the way home because I knew that I was wasting my life. I knew I was wasting my talent. I knew that there was so much more that I could do. And I just didn't know how to get there. I really, really just needed to find my way to that home, that home where I felt, where I felt good about myself, where I knew that I was helping other people. And I knew that I was doing the thing that I was supposed to be doing that it was like this idea in my head that felt like home. And I remember this quote from sleepless in Seattle, which is one of my favorite movies where Tom Hanks, I forget what his character name is, but he was talking about his first wife who had passed away. And he said that meeting her felt like home. Only it wasn't like any home that he had ever known. It was just so much better. That was writing for me. That was blogging. That was building a website and running my social media. That's and, and knowing that I was helping people by doing all of that, that's what I wanted. That's the home that I was trying to get to. 
It's the only thing that makes sense to me. The only thing that makes me feel like everything is going to work out and I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I knew that was what I was supposed to do. And that's why I created blog school, because I want to help you find that same feeling of being at home. I want you to have the same excitement about writing that I have. I want you to feel like you're at home. I want you to feel like you're the best version of you, like you're the most authentic version of you. And I want you to be able to use your talents and to share your gifts with the world. I don't want you to be stuck in this terrible job that you hate for the rest of your life. And I know that so many INFJs get stuck in that spot where you just, you need the money and you have to work at, in what feels like this cubicle farm where you just don't feel valued and you can't use your talents and, and it really just sucks the soul out of your body. That's not what I want for you. I want you to feel like what you're doing is changing the world. And here's the thing. A lot of people say, okay, I want to start a blog, but I need to know more about blogging. I need to know more about writing. I need to know more about websites. I felt that way too. But the thing is, you don't need to know anymore because you're never going to be ready, right? You're never going to know enough. You just have to show up the way that you are. Show up messy and tired. Show up in your sweatpants with your babies and your puppies playing at your feet. If you have a puppy like mine who's screaming in the background, (laughs) show up anyway. He'll be totally fine. Show up just as you are. You've already gone through so much already, and there's so much more. Oh, we've already gone through so much. (laughs) I'm sorry. Can't even read what I wrote. We've already gone through so much in this challenge, right? There's so much more for me to share with you. There's so much more. Um, But I can't share all of it with you in just a challenge, right? So I created blog school so that I can walk you through the process of starting a blog. I can help you learn how to write and establish a writing practice where you can write consistently every single week. And we're also going to talk about marketing your blog and attracting the right kind of audience for you. There's so, so much that I can share with you about all these things that I've learned over the last four years. So I wanted to share with you too about this Vitamix, which is sort of random. Um, but it makes a lot of sense. (laughs) I promise there's a big difference between a free challenge and a program, right? A free challenge is kind of like when you walk into Williams and Sonoma and they're trying to sell you a Vitamix and they're like, Hey, we made you this smoothie. Would you like to try it? That's a massive difference when, if you actually bought the Vitamix and took it home and made a smoothie every single day, right? It's a big difference. I actually bought a Vitamix for my mom um, last last Christmas, not this past one, but the year before. She broke her jaw and she could not um, eat solid food for like three months. And it took, she said that now, which is about a year later, um, she still has problems eating like caramel and stuff like that. Um which is crazy to me that it took, it's taken like a whole year for her jaw to, to heal. But I bought her a Vitamix because I knew that she was going to use it every single day, right? She needed it. And if I would have been, if I would have lived close, I would have gone over to her house every single day and made her a smoothie. But that's a massive difference, right? Whether you sample a smoothie in a store Or you have somebody show up at your house every single day. It's totally different. Even if you want to make a smoothie, if you have a Vitamix, you bought one, you took one home, would you really make one? Do you have the time and the energy? Or would it be a whole different ballgame if I showed up at your house and made one for you every single day? Right? That's the difference between doing this challenge and a program. It's a complete transformation. The program is. It's totally, it's more integration. It's more a step-by-step process. It's not just an overview of what you should do. It is, 
here is what you need to do. Here's the exact steps that you need to take, right? So the completion rate of online programs is very low. It's less than 3%. This is especially true when you do something by your own or by yourself, on your own, by yourself. <laughs> what you need is someone there who's going to be with you, who's going to guide you through the whole process. You need someone to hold you accountable to actually complete the program. It's that completion that will help you with the transformation, right? So I've gotten some questions that I want to answer now. And the first question that I have for you is, what's your plan if you don't sign up for blog school? You join this challenge for a reason, right? You wanted to learn how to write. You want to learn how to blog. You're already thinking about it. You're here for a reason. So what are you going to do if this doesn't work? You might be able to figure it out. I'm positive that you're smart enough to figure it out. I figured it out. But it took me four years to figure it out. It took me four years of struggling and failure and trying and trying again and starting and stopping and starting and stopping. And sometimes in the middle of those start and stops, there have been three months or six months. There's been a lot of frustration and, and a lot of, I don't know what to do next. And the worst part for me is I don't have anybody else to bounce things off of, right? I don't know anybody else, especially when I got started, I knew nobody else who was blogging, nobody else who had a website. I met some people along the way who did, but they weren't in the same spot that I'm in, right? And this is the most important thing. They don't have the same personality that I have. So in this course, you're going to get a full transformation. You're going to get all the steps that you need to do things the right way the first time. And you're also going to get advice and support from somebody who has the exact same personality that you do. It's really a no-brainer. Another thing that people ask is, I've tried another program and it didn't work. Well, you have to ask, why didn't it work? Did you have accountability? Did did you have somebody who was keeping you there to show you up? Did you get the whole or to show you the way? Um, did you get the whole program at one time rather than it going step by step, week by week? There are so many different reasons why it may not work, but that's what makes this program different. And that's what makes it special. It was designed by somebody who has the same personality type as you do me and this is what I've put my heart and soul into for the last four years. This is everything that I've learned. Um, and I know it's worked for me. And I know that it's going to work for you too. So this is how much it costs. And honestly, $500 is really, really, really cheap for this program. It really should be $5,000. Um, but I know that this is the first time that I've offered this course, right? And I also wanted to make it available to as many people as possible. So if you're thinking about joining, this is your sign. <laughs> and now is the time. Go for it. Join us in this program. You will not regret it. You will never be more ready. You'll never be less busy. Because, you know, if you wait until you're ready, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. And here's the other thing. We have a two-week refund policy. So if you get into the course, you'll get two modules of the course. If you get that far into the course and you're like, you know what? This is really not for me. Um, it just doesn't work for me. You'll get 100% of your money back all within the first two weeks. So you can give it a try. Try it for the first two weeks and see if it works for you. And if it's not, no questions asked. You'll get 100% of your money back. Also, you get lifetime access to all of this information. So you're not just going to have it for a little while. You're going to have it for, you know, as long as you need it. Um, and there's also, there's also more to come, right? There's an exclusive membership 
um, just for alumni of the course after we're finished with the course. So it's not like we're just going to um, stick with you for six weeks and then leave you by yourself. Um, there's more that comes after the course as well. All right. So that is all about blog school. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I should have put my email address on here, um, but you can um, respond. Uh, you can leave your questions in the video comments <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, or you can send me an email. My email is s k u h n at infjwoman.com. You can send me a direct message on Instagram. My Instagram is at infjwoman. Um, I always look at all of my messages. Um, and I will meet you back here tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I know that I've been talking for almost an hour now. <laughs> so I also wanted to tell you I'm going to be here tomorrow, which is Friday. Thank God. Uh, we're going to talk about the courage to dream again. And then there's so much more that I wanted to share with you that I just don't have time within five days. So I thought, well, let's just keep going, right? We can talk about other things. So on Saturday, we're going to talk about blog tech. Um, Sunday, we're going to talk about audiences. And then next week, we're going to talk about social media and blogging. Um, we're going to talk about email, how to sell without live launches. And then we're going to have a post-it note party um, next week as well. And we're going to talk about how to outline your blog, how to figure out what your niche is and um, to get some ideas for what you would like to write. So all of that is happening. Same place, same time, every single day at 12 p.m. Eastern time. All right, I'm going to let you go for today. Thank you so much for showing up, for being here all week. Um, and I will see you again tomorrow.